Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. And in this video, we're going to look into A-Level Physics Chapter 13, Wave Superposition. And this is the chapter outline. Now first, what is superposition of wave? It is a principle where two or more wave overlaps in the same medium, and the resulting wave is the sum of their individual displacement at each point. For example, I have this graph here, wave 1 and wave 2. And the green color wave is the resultant wave. If I were to add up the amplitude of the blue wave and the red wave here, that's when I will get the new amplitude of the resultant wave, which is the green wave here. So that's an example of superposition. So superposition and diffractions is closely related. Now let's look into what diffraction is. Diffraction is the bending of wave as they pass through an opening or around an obstacle. So for example, if this is a water wave and this is a gap, as they pass through the gap, this is the pattern that will be produced. And usually the diffraction effect will be the greatest when the wavelength is approximately the size of the gap. And when you have two or more gaps, that's when the resulting wave interfere with each other and superposition occurs to create patterns. We learned about the different types of interference in a while, but just to show you how diffraction can lead to superposition of wave. And this is how diffraction ha can happen. For sound wave, this can be someone's talking here and then the other person listening here, the sound wave bend around an obstacles. And this is how diffraction can happen in like. We learn more about the young double slit experiment to show you more. But you can see that there's an area of bright fringes and the, there's also an area of dark fringe. So some application of wave diffraction, radio wave rely on diff to travel through long distance. And as for microwave, diffraction happens around smaller objects as their shorter wavelength limits bending to feature closer to their scale. So because sound wave has longer wavelength that is often comparable to everyday obstacles, making their diffraction more noticeable. As compared to light wave which has a shorter wavelength, very hard to find gaps that is approximately the size of their wavelength. For now, we're going to look at the interference patterns in wave. So I have two bit speakers here. There are two types of interference that can be produced, namely the constructive interference and the destructive interference. Let's look at the constructive in interference. It happens when two waves overlap in such a way that their amplitude add together resulting in a larger wave. So again, I have another graph with wave 1 and wave 2. You can see that when constructive interference happen, the amplitude gets larger. Whereas for destructive interference is when two waves overlap in such a way that their amplitudes cancel each other out. So in this case, I have a partial destructive interference. It's partial because it, they don't cancel completely, but you can see that the resulting amplitude has decreased. For wave one, wave two, you can see wave two has a bigger amplitude. So when they cancel each other out, that's the resultant amplitude. And that is a partial destructive interference. So constructive and destructive interference can be easily observed in water. So you can see from this water, there are areas which the amplitude of the water wave is higher. There are also areas which the amplitude is lower. Now, since we're talking about water wave, let's look into this diagram here. And the goal of this lesson is so that you can identify whether constructive or destructive interference has occurred in these spots. So let's look at it. When studying water wave, we assume that waves originate from coherent source. And what it means is that the source that's generating the blue wave here and the source that's generating the pink wave here, they are producing wave of the same frequency and the same phase difference. So this is our assumption. Let's look into another term, the path difference. Something we learned in the previous chapter is the difference in the distances traveled by two waves from their respective sources to a point of observation. So in this case here, let's say this is a source, then here will be one wavelength, travel two wavelength, three wavelength. Now, for example, at this purple color dot here, you can see that blue wave has traveled one wavelength, two wavelength. And at this point as also, the pink wave has traveled one wavelength, two wavelength, and three wavelength. And because of that, we say that the path difference will be three minus two wavelength, one wavelength. And again, for the red dot here, Blue wave has traveled one wavelength, two wavelength, and pink wave has traveled one, no, only 0 0.5 wavelength. So the path difference will be 1.5 lambda. And that's the concept of path difference. And we're going to use this concept to determine whether constructive or destructive interference has occurred. Now let's look into it. For constructive interference, the path difference must be a whole number multiple of wavelength, like 0, lambda, 2 lambda, whereas 
For destructive interference, the path difference must be an odd multiple of half the wavelength, half lambda, 1.5 lambda. And this will apply to all the other waves like sound wave, light, and water wave. So let's have some question. For purple dot here, blue wave has traveled two lambda, pink wave has traveled three lambda. The path difference is one lambda. And because we say that if the path difference is a whole number, then it is constructive interference. That's why in this case, constructive interference is happening at this purple dot here. Whereas for the red dot, 2 lambda, 0 0.5 lambda, path difference 1.5 lambda. And because of that, we say that destructive interference has occurred. That's how we can use the path difference to determine whether constructive or destructive interference has happened. So interference effects are typically observed only in the lab or special range setting because coherent sources, which emits wave with a constant phase different and same frequency, they are quite rare in natural environment. That's why we usually only carry it out in a lab, like using a ripple tank, etc. Well, we have been looking at water wave, but for sound wave, it's the same. They also require coherent sound sources for interference to happen, like constructive and destructive. This is why a lot of PA system comes in pairs of speaker rather than just one speaker. This ensures that the sound produces of the same frequency and of the same phase difference. So interference in like is slightly different. This is when you need to do a double slit experiment to cause the diffraction and as a result producing alternating bright and dark fringes. And this is what I mean here, bright fringes, dark fringes. So to do that, a physicist has come up with an experiment called the Young Double Slit Experiment that can showcase this interference pattern produced by the like. And this is how we can set up the experiment. You have a monochromatic light source with two gaps. And the fringes in the double slit experiment are caused by diffraction here, and where light waves spread out after passing through the slit and overlap, producing regions of constructive and destructive interference. Right, now I'm gonna explain how diffracted light here, they can overlap and form bright and dark fringes. So let's start off with point A. At point A, the two diffracted light waves, they travel the same distance, all right? This means that wave arrive in phase, meaning crest aligned with crest, trout with cross. And when this condition is met, we learn that constructive interference will happen. That's why you, you will see bright fringe here. As for point B, we see that the blue wave travels a greater distance than the red wave, and with the path difference being half a wavelength. So if you recap, when the path difference is half a wavelength, that's when destructive interference happen, and that's why you have a dark fringe. And as for C, again, you can see that the blue wave is traveling way longer than the red wave. And at this time, the blue wave is traveling exactly one wavelength further. That means that the path difference is a whole number again, and that's when constructive interference happen forming a bright fringe and it continues on and on which result in what we see just on the screen. So there are a few things that we can calculate to help us to get the wavelength of the like. First is the slit separation which is the distance between the center of two slit and after that you can get the slit to screen distance. The distance of the slit and the screen where interference pattern is observed. We also need the fringe separations, the distance between adjacent bright or dark fringes on the screen and when we have all those values we can use the formula here to calculate the wavelength of the like. So let's do a work example. In a double slit experiment, the distance between the slit is 0 0.5, the screen is 2 meter away from the slit, and the distance between two consecutive bright fringes is 2.4. Calculate the wavelength. So we can just apply the formula, substitute all the value into my equation. You can see that I'm converting mm into meter, because that's the SI unit, because we need to align with the unit here. And at the end, I'm gonna get this answer, the wavelength of the like. All right, now the last subtopic of the day, exploring transmission diffracting grading. It is the spreading of like onto its component wavelength as it passes through a large number of closely spaced slits. So in double slit experiment, we only have two slits, but in this, we have more slit that is more closely spaced. So this is a reflection diffraction grating. It is a closely spaced parallel groove that reflects light instead of transmitting it, causing the reflected light to interfere and produce a diffraction pattern. And just this is how transmission grating looks like. So you can see that instead of just two slit, now you have a lot of other slits. So instead of measuring the distance between the fringe distances, usually the angle is used because it relates to the equation better, as I'll show you in a while. So when the angle is zero, that's when we have zero order maximum. 
This is useful. I'm going to tell you what it is in a while. And it means that the ray travel parallel and in phase. That's why we have constructive interference. And as it goes on and on, you have the first order maximum, which is the one after zero order. You also have second, third, fourth, and they are all bright fringes. The path difference will be lambda, two lambda, etc. So there's an equation for a question like that. You can calculate the wavelength by using these following quantities. D stands for the spacing between adjacent slits. The lambda stands for the angle of diffraction. The N stands for the order of maximum. I know it can be a bit confusing, so let's try to solve a bit of question here. A diffraction grading with 5,000 lines per millimeter. So we're going to use that to calculate our D, which means one space is around this amount of distance. And they say that the first order maximum is observed at an angle of 30. So this is our order maximum angle. Then we need to calculate the wavelength of the light. So using the formula, first we calculate D already using what is given here. And then substitute all the value that we get, 30 angle, and then first order maximum, that's why divided by one. And we would have gotten our answer, the wavelength of the light. So I know it can be a bit confusing, but at this point, just memorize the formula and then apply it in your exam. So diffraction grading on white light. In the previous experiment, what we are using is monochromatic like, all right? But what if you use white like? As you know that white like is a combination of all the other like, and all the like diffract differently, different amount. So this is what happened when you have white like passes through all these different slits here. And looking at this diagram, you can also see that red like actually diffract the most. And using the equation that we have just now, it explains why. Because red like has the longest wavelength, and because of that, the angle here will be bigger because the value of the dominator here is bigger. Whereas violet light diffract the least because it has the shortest wavelength. And that's all about diffraction grading. Thank you so much for watching this video. I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.